So I'm currently uh, taking over my dad's farming operation. I grew up on the farm, so I mean farming kind of came naturally for me and I always knew I wanted to farm. Well, I actually saw some advertising for them on just a website I was on. Kind of checked them out and I liked the idea of you know being able to make my own trades, not having to call into a broker. The cost is actually less than a full service broker from what I've found. Um, the commissions are pretty cheap. Not only can you do it yourself, you don't have to, uh, to pay as much to, to deal with the broker. It's been a really good relationship with, with the Green Edge staff. If I have to get a hold of them there right away, I mean, and if Logan isn't available, I can talk to anybody else in the office and my questions are answered immediately. I would definitely recommend Green Hedge. I think they're a great, uh, great service and I've had great success with them, so I'd recommend them to, to anybody. Hi there, welcome to Grain TV. I'm Kevin McNew. It is Thursday, May 18th, and a massive sell-off in beans. Let's take a look at Grain Edge's trade platform to see what the action was like today. Beans were hammered overnight as news broke about corruption charges for Brazil's President Temer, sending the Brazilian reel in a free fall. On the opening bell, Soybeans tried to stabilize around 9.50 and spent most of the trade session bouncing between 9.50 and 9.55. But by mid-session, sellers pushed the market down into the 9.45 area. Going into the close, Beans tried to make a run back to the 9.50 mark, but a quick wave of selling at the end kept the market at the day's lows. On the close, soybeans were off 30, corn was off 5, and wheat lost Welcome back. Let's see what was going on in the grain markets today. First of all, the major news was what was happening in Brazil. Late yesterday, after the markets had closed, there was a newswire story that broke that Brazil's President Timmer was recorded giving a bribe uh, to a potential witness in a corruption case. So that sent the Brazilian market sharply lower overnight. We started uh, the soybean market lower, uh, gapping lower in the, sun, in the uh, overnight session, and it just continued to uh, escalate to the downside as we moved throughout the day. We'll talk about the implications of that here in a second, but let's get back to the normal Thursday routine of export sales. These numbers on face value were strong compared to where we've seen the last few weeks, but obviously the news from Brazil was overshadowing things. Let's take a look at the data as it came out this morning. First of all, wheat came in better than expected on um, new crop, I'm sorry, on old crop delivery, 247,000 uh, above zero to 200 last, or zero to 200 expected, and 393 for new crop at the high end. Everything else also uh, reasonably high uh, at the high end. So that on its face was certainly positive. But again, the real news was what was going on in Brazil. The Brazilian reel was sharply lower and was really the barometer for what was going on in soybeans today. At one point, the Brazilian reel was off 8.5%. We were trading a little better than that, off only 6%. Uh, here at the taping of Grain TV, but you can see as we look at the Brazilian real chart just how dramatic this drop was today in reflection of the daily action up until now. Keep in mind that over this time period, go back to the lows in October, November, and you know we've seen the Brazilian real move higher. This has been what has stymied the Brazilian farmer from selling soybeans. They have not seen good prices because their Brazilian real has been going up, so they've been holding back beans from the world market. You know, numbers suggest they are 20 to 30 percent uh, below where they normally are sold for this time of year. So that has been the driving impetus of this. And today's action in the reel will obviously reverse that. It will send potentially a flood of farmer selling into the marketplace. And so that was what the U.S. soybean market was responding to. So even though today's action was off 30 cents, that is only a 3% drop in value versus what is now a 6% drop in the Brazilian reel with maybe more to come. So, you know, simple economics here. If the Brazilian reel is off 6% and our U.S. price is off 3%, then that means we're 3% 
disadvantaged in terms of exporting beans. And so either our markets are going to need to correct lower or we're going to see uh, a, big, a big move away from U.S. purchases uh, or U.S. Uh, buyers of beans. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Looking at the July soybean action here, obviously a down day, 30 cents down, getting down to this 940 support, which has been the long-term support here on the weekly chart. Going back all the way, first of all, uh, about a month ago, uh, and then all the way back into last harvest. So that is certainly you know a key market or a key uh, support level to be watching. We traded down to 943 today, uh, bouncing a little bit above that on the close with a little bit of buying interest. But I wouldn't be surprised to see us break below that. If you're doing the math on the exchange rate move of a six percent move on the Brazilian real, we need a probably around a five to six percent move on U.S. soybean prices. That would put the mark down at the 910 level. So that's probably, you know, what economics would tell you about where U.S. soybean prices need to come down to just to stay even with what has happened in the Brazilian real market today. So certainly a lot of, uh, a lot of movement here today, probably more to come on tomorrow, especially if the Brazilian real keeps moving down. Soybeans are going to have to come down in sympathy with that. That's all we've got for today on Grain TV. As always, if you'd like to learn more about how we can help you in your own grain marketing situation, including lowering your trading commission cost to only $7 a side, visit us online at grainhedge.com. Have a great day. We'll talk to you on Friday.